Many students of math love the field because of its logical precision. We can tackle any problem with absolute certainty, and we don't have to deal with inaccurate measurements or subjective biases. But what if math isn't quite as perfect as we'd all hoped? In 1931, Kurt Gödel rocked the mathematical world with his two incompleteness theorems. In order to fully understand the implication of his theorems, let's try to create our own math system. What exactly does it mean to build a math system, and what does a math system even look like? Math may seem like a giant monolithic beast, but there's actually not just one kind of math, and math systems are often built from just a few simple rules. A math system is like a Lego set. There are a base set of bricks called axioms that define the system. These axioms could be anything we want, even things that have no basis in reality, but typically we try to make sure they make sense intuitively, such as the number zero exists. We can then take these axioms, put them together, rearrange them, and ultimately build an incredible structure. These structures are called theorems, and the blueprint of how to lay each brick on top of another is the proof. For example, let's look at a math system called piano arithmetic. Piano arithmetic is built up of just seven axioms that describe the natural numbers, addition, multiplication, and something called induction, which we'll talk about in a future video. Putting these simple axioms together allows for a powerful look of arithmetic on the natural numbers. So, what properties would we like for our own math system? Well, we'd like it to be powerful enough to be interesting. So we say we want it to be sufficiently expressive, or strong enough to describe computation. Given how complex our technology has become, this may sound pretty restrictive, but it's not. A system doesn't need too much to describe computer programs. Even a simple system, like piano arithmetic, which we just discussed, is sufficiently expressive. Another property we might like is the ability to prove every true statement. This is known as completeness. We would like math and science to answer all of the unknown questions that we're still exploring. As mathematician David Hilbert said, there is no such thing as an unsolvable problem, and we must know, we will know. It would be great if our system could prove everything that is true within it. One final property we might like is that if we can prove something, we shouldn't be able to prove the opposite of that thing. Being able to prove a statement and its opposite would mean that we would be able to prove false statements, since one must be true and the other false. If we could prove false statements, we would have to question all of our mathematical proofs, since they could lead us to an incorrect conclusion. If your ruler is inaccurate, any measurement made with that ruler would be untrustworthy. Proving at most one of a statement and its opposite is known as consistency, and seems like a no-brainer. However, an inconsistent system might be worse than it looks at first glance. This is because an inconsistent system can prove anything. To understand why this is, let's say that our system is inconsistent and can prove, for example, both there are flying pigs and no pigs can fly. Now, let's try to prove some random statement, such as unicorns exist. The statement, there are flying pigs, or unicorns exist, must be true because we can prove that there are flying pigs, making the full or claim true. However, we also know the statement, there are flying pigs, is false because we can prove that pigs can't fly. The full claim must still be true because we've already proved it. For the claim to still be true when pigs can't fly, it must be the case that unicorns exist. We could have replaced unicorns exist to prove anything we wanted, including unicorns don't exist. This is known as the principle of explosion and is one of the reasons why we definitely do not want an inconsistent system. So far, we have a sufficiently expressive math system that we want to be complete and consistent. Unfortunately, this isn't possible. Gödel's first incompleteness theorem tells us that any sufficiently expressive math system must be either incomplete or inconsistent. This is very unfortunate news, and given how bad inconsistency is, we're forced to hope that our system is incomplete. You might think that it's okay for our system to be incomplete. We can just add any unprovable statement as an axiom and call it a day. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite work because adding a new axiom like that actually creates a brand new system 
and this new system is still susceptible to the incompleteness theorem, meaning that there will still be some true statement that we can't prove in this new system. We can keep adding these unprovable axioms, but there will always be another one lurking behind the corner. Forced to accept the incompleteness of our system, let's turn back to consistency. We would like to patch that hole at least, so let's prove that our system is consistent for peace of mind. Unfortunately again, Gödel's second incompleteness theorem tells us that a consistent math system cannot prove its own consistency. We really need our system to be consistent, but if it were, we'd never be able to prove it with that system. We'd prefer our system to be incomplete over inconsistent, and being unable to prove its consistency is an example of its incompleteness. So, we'll have to work in a math system with the lingering possibility that it might be inconsistent, and there's nothing we can do about it. The proofs for these theorems are really interesting, which we'll explore in future videos, so stay tuned. We'll use the undecidability of the halting problem to work through the proof, so be sure to check out our previous video 